So Microsoft, that very large company up in Redmond, has invested a ton of money in uh, putting together um, this great tool that um, my slide deck decides to uh, change the screen <clears throat> called Power BI. Um, and they've got two good reasons for doing that. One is um, you've probably heard of uh, Dynamics before, Microsoft Dynamics. So they needed their own uh, set of tools for displaying financial information. Um, so whether it's profit, basic profitability or other things, they needed something besides these ug ugly tabular reports that you know they've been producing. I mean, if anybody's seen a Great Plains report, you know how ugly those reports can be, right? So, um, so that's one really good reason that they did that. <clears throat> um, there's lots of other reasons though, because their old uh, reporting infrastructure for their database engine, SQL Server, which I'm an expert in, um, it also had a lot of really ugly tabular reports. Um, so they went out on a mission quite a few years ago now to kind of bring things into the 21st century. And um, so that's really kind of the, the roots of Power BI. The, uh, the slide on the left-hand side um, is an industry analysis thing called um, the Magic Quadrant, where these analysts go and they look at all the different software products and they say, who, who is actually, you know, understands what needs to be done and then who can do that? In the industry, um, on the left-hand side, you can see challengers and on the right-hand side, leaders. And the top to bottom is ability to execute. So you always want to be the guy that is up and to the right. And so th as this slide shows, um, the, it, the, industry believes that Microsoft's uh, Power BI vision is the strongest and they have the, the highest ability to execute. Okay, Their close competitor is Tableau, uh, and they're going neck and neck. Why does that matter to QuickBooks, right? So let me show you a quick little uh, simplified Power BI architecture. So this is kind of a simplified Power BI architecture as it relates to the QuickBooks world. On the bottom, there's QuickBooks, and there's some kind of connector that will allow you to look at that in something called the Power BI Desktop, and then you can push that up to their web service. Um, and then finally, I can use my phone to go um, in the Power BI Mobile to go see whatever information my clients want. So it's kind of cool to be able to literally get, uh, I mean, Intuit has you know, some stuff available on here, but it's probably not exactly the custom things that your client wants. And so this is an opportunity for you to be able to do that. So first thing I wanna do is talk about how can I get QuickBooks information out of QuickBooks and into this Power BI thingy. So there's a number of different choices for doing that. I've listed them up on the screen. Um, Cube, C data. Um, there's something inside QuickBooks already called custom reporting. You can use that. And then finally, QODBC. Um, and the words next to it um, are very hard fought words. Through trial and error, um, we've discovered that QODBC, just even though it's supposed to be an ODBC driver, there are certain applications that it literally just won't work with. Um, and Power BI happens to be one of those. So don't waste your time. So, um, I've already done that for you. Your takeaway today is QODBC is not gonna work for Power BI. So then you have to roll that up to the other two levels, which is custom reporting um, and uh, the C data ODBC driver along with uh, Q. This slide, which is um, probably difficult to read from the back of the room, but I'll give it, give it to you in the slide deck. The short answer is when somebody went out to the Microsoft forums and said, how do you think we should use QuickBooks data from desktop, Microsoft said use Q. So the next slide is really gonna emphasize a major point, and that is your accountants, right? I, I'm a programmer 
and I'm expected to do programming things, but you're not expected to do programming things. And I, so the stuff on the screen is what I would call the gibberish that really drives a lot of the very tailored reports that get done. On the very left-hand side, and I know that it's a pretty little bit of an eye chart, but what you find is very English and accounting kind of words like the calendar for the build date, the company name, the currency, the customer, and uh, the employee, and what the geography is. If I compare that to you know something that's out of custom reporting, it's Q report admin group underscore V underscore LST underscore customer. Right. I don't know about you, but I know which one I want to read. So I, the point is the cube uh, system is, is good not just because uh, Microsoft said it is, but it's good because it's more accountant friendly, right? It's really intended for an end user who wants to consume data not for a developer who wants to go, you know, do a bunch of highfalutin custom work. And if that information weren't enough, I pulled a, a sample balance sheet with C data. And um, as you can see, it's not exactly what you would kind of expect it to be. So let's talk about reporting with Cube then. What, what happens? How does that work? right, in the grand scheme of things. So Cube is a third-party product uh, built by a company called Clarify, and its entire job is to get the information from QuickBooks, put it in its own repository in a way that you can report from it easily. Cube does not do reporting. Cube does have some standard... Um, Templates is actually what they call them, things that you can start with. But they're not a report writing tool. They're a get your data tool. Does that make sense? So from the left-hand side where the QuickBooks box is, Cube goes out using both the custom reporting piece as well as the underlying software development toolkit to go grab every piece of information that is possible to grab out of QuickBooks, build that database. So, and there's a scheduling engine that allow you to do that a couple of times a day. The data um, that you want to see as an accountant, you don't want to see, uh, as we talked about earlier, all these weird things, you don't want to make all these joins. So the templates that have been created have specifically been created to free you from doing all that. So if you want to go analyze sales, there's a sales analysis model. You open up the sales analysis model and all the information you need is available to you for the sales analysis. You want to analyze P&L over the last five years, there's a, uh, a financial summary uh, analytic that you can go look at. Do you have a question? So, you know, I, I work with a lot of customers who, um, yeah, I mean, he pulls all of the information out of QuickBooks, but he puts it in a different format. You know, it pulls the information and completely restructures the way the data is. So as an example, um, when you're inside QuickBooks, you might look at an invoice, you might look at a credit memo, um, you might look at, a payment, all of those things are related to sales. In any other tool, if you were looking at that, you would go look at invoices, and then separately you would have to look at payments, and then separately you would have to look at credit memos. So it pulls the information into a brand new uh, way of looking at the information. And, you know, what I run across a lot of people who first thing that they do when they want to go write reports for their clients is export it out of Excel. I mean, out of QuickBooks. And so one of the things that this will do is 
because it runs in the background and you know updates this database you can go build your excel report or your power bi report hit the refresh button and you don't have to do any more work So Cube is an app whose job is to go build a new data model. So um, if you look at their website, um, they call themselves the only data warehouse for QuickBooks. You don't. You, so as I, um, I think I covered that on an earlier slide, let me roll back up to it. You don't have to, but um, it's far better than anything else. So you can use custom reporting, right? So um, in fact, inside the slide deck, each one of these is a hyperlink, so. Okay. So if you look at the custom reporting, I'm opening the Word document that talks to it. So you can actually use this, but there's the names of the tables, right? And so the point that I was making earlier about um, so there's your invoices, and separately there's credit memos somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So obviously, right, you want to know the net of both. If you're looking at all your all your sales by item, it doesn't just do me good to look at the invoice or the sales receipt or even the two of those. Then I want to look at credit memos too and say how many were brought back. And if you if you want to use Power BI with this, of course you can but then you're in charge of stacking those together in the right way to make sure that you get the right number. Does that make sense? So Cube has actually done the work of reformatting all that data, stacking it together, if you will, and making it accessible in something that says, show me the sales. Cube is out there, and like I said, you don't have to use Power BI, uh, you don't have to use Cube to use Power BI, but it's very handy. <clears throat> but let me let me go back onto the Power BI train and talk a little bit more about that. So from the desktop, what we would want to do is create, I'm going to open it up now. So if we take one of the cube templates as an example, um, he's going to give us the data model and then we're going to do whatever changes we want to do inside that report and then following that double black line there we're going to publish that information and make it accessible uh, on the web okay so up here this tiny little button right here it actually says publish um, all right so on the right hand side over here those are all those tables that it's been reformatted to that I can't even read on my screen, um, but they're in the slide deck, right, as I outline those out. So the thing of it is, is so this is literally a template out of the box from Q. Right? I haven't done anything to this other than hit the refresh button. And these numbers may not be interesting, but <clears throat> as I start going through the uh, individual tabs, right, the power of P Power BI, um, comes into play. The point of opening this though is to talk about the fact that so we open it from the desktop designer and push that information into the website and then that's what enables you to have your client or their team see it from a web browser or their phone, any of those things, right? And then in my final 10 minutes, let me talk about the other major piece here. So there's a lot of really good graphics and reports that you can get uh, once you do that in Power BI. We've talked a lot about Cube and we've talked a lot about desktop, but I don't want you to think that QBO is out in the cold because QBO also has a solution, right? <clears throat> so there's three ways that you can actually use Power BI with QuickBooks Online. The first is Microsoft actually built an integration already. Um, I will tell you uh, from experience 
that it's limited. And in some cases, highly problematic. Um, if you uh, access it directly from the Power BI website, they will give you some incredibly brilliant looking, um, there you go, charts. It's pretty much what it looks like. And you can continue edit it. If you try to access it straight from the desktop designer, you go from, as an example, having a balance sheet to having general ledger detail. Go build your own balance sheet. So there's a little bit of a trick with regard to that. Um, the other thing that's true on the, power, the Microsoft uh, Power BI connector, if your client is using classes, it's useless. There's no classes at all in the initial version of the beta version of the Microsoft Connect. So the other two ways that you can get QuickBooks information into um, Power BI, um, C data. So C data uh, software has a connector. Um, and I think I, I talked about that earlier. It's again, you don't have the, you don't have the everything all in one place kind of thing. You have to look at invoices separately, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it's again, it's an option. Um, the third option is um, I'm told that the QODBC driver for QuickBooks Online has overcome the problem that um, its desktop client has. So you can use that. So, um, so that those are the two options for uh, Power BI in desktop and uh, QuickBooks Online. And I guess I would just follow up with you know kind of my be sure my final slide here that talks about my favorite controls. Favorite controls in Power BI are the matrix control because it basically creates a pivot table that I can drill up and down in. Um, and then finally, a uh, stacked column. And again, it's because I can drill up and down, whether I'm drilling up and down in my chart of accounts, exploding the detail and collapsing the detail, or um, within a date range. So if I want to go from year to quarter to month, I can go up and down that in both of those. So. So that was the introduction to uh, Power BI for QuickBooks. Lots of different ways to get at it. It's an incredibly powerful tool, um, and I use it all the time.